This is not a very, very, very modern blues harmonica lesson. This is just uh, how to bring out your inner beast on the harmonica, your harmonica beast, using a metronome. So I've got this Whitmer, Whitner MT50 quartz metronome. I love this little thing. Here's the, here's the model back here. It's pretty cheap. These are not super expensive, 25 bucks maybe, something like that. I don't know, maybe less on Amazon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to bring out the inner beast by working with tempos and by working with a fairly straightforward lick. Now this is at 92, 92, and it's, these are very important, these tempos. So for me, if I want a, a tempo that's going to groove me and not too fast, groove me at a place that feels like a comfortable, stable beginning place, and the lick I'm going to do goes like this. So I'm going to actually take this, the tempo, I'm going to put this right up here. Now it felt, now wait a minute, is it really at 92? Good God, it's at 92. That felt reasonable before, but then I've just gone up, so this, I, the beast is already in me. Now I don't know if you can tell, but I was already pushing a little bit ahead of the beat. So the trick, the trick in bringing out the beast is really listening and feeling Singing it first. I think this is too slow as my stable center. I'm going to go to 100. It's easy to remember. 100. Let's see how that is. Now what you may notice is, where well, you can tell, I'm kind of moving and bopping. This is the musical body, I'm trying to, did that just speed up? Oh, is that just my mind? Oh my god, okay. So this is the tempo we're going to use. We're going to go to. We're going to start at 100. I don't know if you can do 100. We may need to warm you up slower. Let's let's turn this off. What am I doing? This is not. This is on a C harp. This is not for beginners. So if you're a beginner, you can stick around. You can listen. But this is not for you. This is for intermediate players looking for a challenge. And the riff that I'm doing is one that Jason Ritchie did on. Uh, a recording that I made many years ago, at least a decade ago, that was the thing that got me going on this. So, dun dun dun, he was doing a, using a D harp, right? Two draw, twice, whole step bend on two, to one, and then back to two draw. Alright, now that happens to be the lick that's at the very end of the lick, but it starts off there too. Except instead of just going bump, it goes da 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 da. So can you do that much? That tempo feels right. And I would actually suggest that what you do is you, when you can do this lick, when you can begin to groove it, find the groove that feels right and then find what that is on the metronome and let, let that be your home base groove, the one you feel you can do it at. So that's the first part of it. And then it's which is a two draw, four blow, three draw. And then we do that repeated riff. So that's it. The riff's really three parts. Except that, that the middle part really should be part of the first part. Now I'm tongue blocking the four blow. Everything else is lip pursed. So that's tongue block. If you don't tongue block, 
you can do it lip pursed that's okay <laughs> And then at the end, my little innovation is just to take a chord. It just helps me time it, but you don't have to do that. And I, at the end, at the very end, I'm taking a little ta chord in and puff out. So, it's a lot to put together. I'm hoping you can take some time at this tempo. Let me do it slow. It's hot. Let me do it slow. Now that's probably right there is probably 92. Now, so far we haven't brought out any beast at all, have we? None. No beast. No beast today. No beast today. Did I really make that other video? Okay. Here we go. So, I'm grooving it at 92. Actually, I'm grooving it at 100, because for me, that feels a little bit better. We're, gonna, we're almost in beast mode now. Now, did it just speed up, or is that just my mind? The crucial thing here is that the metronome never lies, unless it's running out of juice, in which case it will start to do weird things. I don't believe it's running out of juice. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Beast mode. Beast mode begins with close, patient attention to the beat, towards where you're placing it relative to the beat. You've got to think like a bop poet. And you have to feel the swing relative to the beat. Now it might help, for me it helps, uh, snapping on what feels like two and four, the upbeats, if you will. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, I, I want to, if you were to go back and play this, you would hear that I made slight mistakes. You would hear slight mistakes in placement. Drummers are keyed into this, bass players are keyed in, harp players tend not to be. You want to you want to become a beast? You want to let the beast out of the bag? You got to put in your discipline. So I'm just, I basically have fooled you into thinking this was all going to be about going, wah! No, that's too easy. You can do that, but opening up the you know the 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 oven depends on the discipline that's hard that you've hardwired in there through patient practice with the beat one two one two so here's great practice just snap your fingers on the offbeat then something begins to happen <laughs> So the magic happens with the upbeat that you are providing. Now I externalized it with the snap, but really what I was doing before was you weren't seeing it, but I was supplying it inside. <coughs> All right, now we're going to have some fun. So that's at 100. Let's go to 108. 
might make sense to do the <laughs> now normally when I play and improvise I'm not snapping I'm holding it with this that that was at 108 all right well so pause for pause for the cause beast mode on the harp consists of slowly beast mode basically is 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 a boiled frog alive mode before it knows what has happened to it beast mode is pushing 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 then back off so you go to 108 I'm gonna go to 116 and that's pretty fast for me when I heard Jason Ritchie, he was doing over 130. 116, pretty fast. Ah, let's start with the groove. Feel it. for the cause on that. So what I did there was go from the riff I was showing you into the stuff that I used to woodshed on but before I made Crossroads Blues, before I made that album with uh, Sunshine of Your Love and all that super fast stuff. This is the way I did it with this Whit Whitner MT50. It was this unit in my cold garage. And that's how I got into beast mode. What I was conscious of there is that I just totally, when I moved to those licks just then, did not have it. And that's at 116. So 120 would be sort of basic fast. This is 116. I didn't even talk about that, which was I wanted to learn how to play 16th notes at this tempo and then at a considerably faster tempo. So I had to start off with something that, that I could do. What's that? Well, that's sort of the basic crossroads riff. It's really easy. It's, it's bent four to unbent four. Then five draw to unbent four. We're like a dance class with half time riffs. All right. What did I do there? I just reversed it. I reversed it. I did the other one first. So you see how beast mode is, is an acquired thing. You can't just jump right in. You gotta earn your way up to a tempo that'll then begin to bring out beast mode. Because we haven't really begun to push it yet. Beast mode is faster than this. And rhythmic precision is important. Because once you really get into beast mode, you're gonna there's gonna be a lot of temptation to go outside all this stuff. So you've got to groove the beat powerfully. Um, all right, that's 116. Let's go to 120. I I began when I when I when I was beginning to push the tempo and turn into true beast 
Gusso Beast, chasing down Richie Beast. Um, 120 was sort of where I would go with the 16th notes now, but the, the basic riff, mellow down easy, mellow down easy. Don't forget. Can you feel the swing? Get it till you can feel it. That was the riff that I would do. Now, we're going to pause for the cause, because now I've, I've pushed to 120. Now what you do is go back down to 108. And the crucial thing here is backing off, knowing how to back off the throttle, regroove at the slower tempo. This is how we inaugurate, we how we initiate and maintain beast mode. Is you gotta be a let's go back down. What were you at the beginning? 92. It's tricky. Once you've been pushing it up, you want to push. The challenge is to swing, so let's start with that finger. If you can't One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's tough. I want to speed up. I think 100 is where we decided was actually kind of basic. So let's go from down from 120 to 100. <laughs> Right about there, I began to slide out of the groove. So again, okay, now, so let's groove it simple. If you can snap your finger. Ah, very important correlate of beast mode. You got on the one hand be unconscious so that the music is just playing through you. On the other hand, you can't lose focus and slide away from the groove. So, and you got to be able to keep those two things in tension. The test of a first rate intelligence, F. Scott Fitzgerald says, the ability to keep two ideas in the mind at the same time without giving in to one or the other. Not too tight, not too loose. Okay, now we're going to go up back to 120, which was our sort of stable high end platform. <laughs> I can't even do repeated. All right, but anyway, I'm at 120. Now, I'm going to go up to one. This one goes from 120 to 126. This is when it starts to get hairy. What am 
am I doing? That's a fun one. Four draw, three draw. Four draw, bend, three draw. You just learned something fun, didn't you? You're going to scare people with that. Too fast. No, I can't do it at that tempo. But at 108... Oh boy, I'm putting that right up front in this video. That's a good one. Back to 126. Again, we're, this is our developmental. This is like there was a book called Stretching back in the day by Bob, whatever his name. And there was like the developmental stretch, which was like, ee, I don't think my ligaments want to let go. Tendons. Ah. So you're pushing a little bit past your comfort zone. This is a little bit past my comfort zone. <laughs> improvising with 16th notes at that tempo. So 16th notes Except you're moving. See the one that I use if I want to just focus on grooving 16th notes. It's hot. It's hot. It's not really an even thing. So really you're starting off with six blow, six draw, seven draw. I think this lesson's over. We have achieved success. I can do that lick at 132. Beast mode! Beast mode! Barely. So, 138. For me, 138 is kind of absolute top. But here's the thing now. Let's take it back down to 120. I actually have to slow myself down to what used to be a really fast tempo. You get the idea, right? Beast 
mode. All right. More later. That's all from the doctor today. Bye-bye.